and walking in fear, I'm done going back to the past. <laughs> it really been minimal. I'm gonna follow the king, I got a key. Now that I follow the principle, and I'm good, and I'm lit. I got guys, so I don't need a trip. Do the end everything that I'm in. What is good, guys, man? Thank you for tuning back into the channel, man. If you're new, make sure you hit that sub button down below to be notified for every single video that I drop, man. Listen, man, as y'all can see by the title, bro. 17 year old who audio recorded being assassinated by grandma. Craziest title I ever read, man. Look at her right now. Um, make sure y'all hit that like button, that share button, man. You know what I'm saying. Follow the Instagram link down below in the description, man. Send me some links to what y'all will want to see, and I'll definitely react to it, man. Let's go ahead and get into this crazy video, man. I don't, I, I don't know what to expect. Tell us what happens when he kicks you and strikes you. Tell us what happens when he kicks you and strikes you. Tell us what happens when he kicks you and strikes you. What kind of struggle? He's running after me. Oh, man. I'm running away. This 73-year-old grandma killed her own grandson in cold blood. The horrific murder was actually recorded in a harrowing 911 call where you can hear her repeatedly firing at her grandson as he pleaded with the 911 operator for help before finally dying. The grandma later claimed that she acted in self-defense, but was that really the truth? Let's look into the case of Jonathan wow. Kaufman, the 17-year-old who audio recorded being murdered by grandma. What makes arcade tight is they have all oh, this It's already sounding crazy. You know, it's just a bunch of cool sounds. At 17 years old, Jonathan Hoffman was living in the affluent suburb of West Bloomfield outside of Detroit, Michigan. He was finishing up his final year at Farmington Central High School and had plans to attend Eastern Michigan University. Jonathan's family and friends would describe him as funny and a kind boy who was always cracking jokes and helping others. He was extremely bright and super into technology and could build you a computer from scratch. See, he don't, the, I'm a, from, from, from the outside looking at he don't even seem like he would try to harm anybody. He seemed like he was in his books in school, you know what I'm saying? Like a nice guy, man, but you know, looks can be deceiving, man, at the end of the day, but it's crazy, though. Scratch. Jonathan was also known for always wearing white t-shirts and gray sweatpants, saying that he wanted to be known for who he was and not what he wore. His future seemed bright and he had his whole life ahead of him, but then everything changed. The year 2011 was a tough one for the Hoffman family. Jonathan's parents, Michael and Jennifer Hoffman, were going through a divorce and had decided to move their family to Arizona. But while there, their younger daughter, Jessie, was diagnosed with non-malignant brain tumor which required a month-long wow. hospital stay, three surgeries, and many rehabilitation sessions. According to Jonathan's dad, Michael, Jesse's recovery was consuming most of their time, and Jonathan started feeling lonely and missing his friends back home. So, when his grandma, Sandra Lane, invited him to live with her until he completed his senior year, his parents agreed. Sandra was a former school teacher who lived in a condo in West Bloomfield with her husband, Fred Lane. Jennifer was one of her five children from her previous marriage, and she described her as a doting grandmother to her children. So when Jonathan went to live with her, Jennifer and her husband were not worried because they knew that he would be safe and taken care of. Sandra Lane uh, was really trying to get me to send him back and she said she would take good care of him and she promised she would take good care of him and that he would be happy staying there with his friends and finishing out his last year of high school but what happened next no one could have seen coming Okay, we're gonna stay on the phone with me, okay? So 
Yeah. You know what? I hate. I, I hold on, man, bro. Like I, I really hate when you call nine one one, man, and they take their precious time in getting the help. First thing you should be doing is calling the ambulance first and foremost, and then talk to them while they're on the phone, bro. You know what I'm saying? That can really save somebody's life. I hate that, man. On May 18, 2012, at around 5.30 p.m., the police at West Bloomfield Township responded to this chilling 911 call from Jonathan reporting that Sandra, who he had been living with for several months, had him. You can actually hear the anguish in his voice as he begs the dispatcher for help. But what you'll hear next is truly horrifying. Are you there? Oh gosh, bro. <laughs> to shoot him again after he already down, that sound like cold blooded. You know what I want to say. You know what I'm saying? That don't sound like somebody that's trying to escape. You know, that's the boy trying to escape, but she's saying she was running away. So something ain't really adding up right here, man. <laughs> An officer would later testify that when they arrived at the scene, Sandra ran up to them with her hands up and screamed, I murdered my grandson. She then led them into the house where they found a gruesome scene with gore everywhere and Jonathan lying unresponsive on the floor with multiple gunshot wounds. Next to him was a Glock 9mm semi-automatic handgun and nine spent ammunition cartridges. Jonathan was rushed to the hospital where he was sadly pronounced dead at 6 p.m. An autopsy later revealed that he had suffered up to nine gunshot wounds in his chest, abdomen, and left arm. Though there are some sources that say the bullet wounds were actually five or six. The grandmother on trial for murder right now. The chilling moments right after she shot her own grandson, all captured on a harrowing 911 call made by the teenager. She says she was afraid for her life. On this frantic 911 call, you can hear the gunfire that would end up killing 17 year old Jonathan Hoffman. Incredibly, he managed to call police as he was being shot. <laughs> Even more shocking, the woman he identified as the shooter, his own grandmother. As the tapes played in court, 74-year-old Sandra Lane sobbed. Police say she shot her grandson five times, and when they arrived at the scene, Lane ran out of the front door with her hands up. The teen had been living with Lane and his grandfather for several months, attending an alternative school after previous brushes with the law. The news about Jonathan's violent and tragic death oh, shook wow. the entire community, yeah. most especially the family, who could not understand why she did it. What reason could she possibly have to murder her own grandson in cold blood? So one of the most important things for me with anything on the two bus is I now, at some point in 2011, probably because of everything that was going on with his family, Jonathan had started experimenting with narcotics, especially synthetic marijuana called Spice or K2. This caused a lot of friction between him and his grandma, to a point that she even called the police on him one time. I heard about that Spice and that K2. I heard that can really mess up your mind, man. Y'all need to stop smoking all that weird stuff. It can really make you crazy. Like saying that he was acting aggressively towards her. The officer who arrived at the scene said that Jonathan was yelling and shouting and being disrespectful to his grandmother. But when they tried to arrest him for disorderly conduct, Sandra reportedly stopped them, saying that she would take care of it. She would later tell her husband that she was afraid of her grandson and his friends. In another incident that happened in March 2012, Jonathan had reportedly taken some mushrooms for the first time and then freaked out and called the police on himself. Oh my when an God. officer arrived, Jonathan reportedly jumped into his arms and hugged him. He was taken to the hospital and treated for hallucinogen use before being charged with possession of narcotics and given a 93-day suspended sentence and two months probation. After he was killed, police found synthetic marijuana and other substances in his room, and tests done on his body came back positive for marijuana. 
Sandra told the jury she armed herself and then confronted her grandson in his upstairs bedroom loft. When asked why she felt the need to carry a gun, she said that she wanted him to listen to her and pay attention. So you walk into the loft, did you, did you have a conversation with him? Yes. What kind of conversation? It wasn't a conversation. Huh? Arguing. What is he saying to you? Swearing. He's yelling. Is he telling you he's taking the car? Yes. However, things apparently did not go as planned and the two started arguing. The argument got so heated to the point that Jonathan allegedly became violent and attacked Sandra. Tell us what happens when he kicks you with strikes How many times did you shoot the gun? I don't know. What happens when you shoot the gun? It's a struggle. What kind of struggle? He's running after me. And what are you doing? She only said that she tells the truth. Running away. Now, according to Sandra, Jonathan, even after being shot multiple times, was able to chase her around the house before she finally hid in the basement. She was there for several minutes and then eventually went back to her grandson's room to check on him. She claimed that they struggled again and then she pulled the trigger again. He's yelling. You remember yelling, let go, let go, let go? Yes. Do you shit? If you remember? Why are you sh I don't know. You just do. I don't know. Are you still afraid? Yes. In an interesting development, Sandra's husband, Fred Lane, who was brought in to testify for the prosecution, told the jury that he had no idea that his wife even had a gun. They said that Sandy had the gun. And what was your reaction to that, sir? I was flabbergasted. Flabbergasted meaning what? Thinking that Jonathan had the gun. So you were surprised that in fact it was your wife. Is that correct? Yes. He said that while Jonathan was troubled, his wife never wanted to send him back to his parents, even after he had asked her to do it. You couldn't tell me all the problems that she was having with John. Because if she did, I'd say, send him back to his parents. Fred went on to reveal something pretty interesting that happened about an hour before the tragic incident. Apparently, after coming home from Jonathan's narcotics test, Sandra told Fred to take the dog out for a walk and that she would tell him when to come home. I was getting tired and the dog was getting tired. Okay, all right. So we uh, watched uh, a basketball game uh, sitting on the grass and I heard the sirens, the fire department and the police. Had Sandra planned the murder all along? The trial went on for about two weeks, which during the time, the jury heard the harrowing recording of Jonathan's desperate call to 911 as his grandmother mercilessly pumped bullets into him. The prosecution told jurors that Sandra never attempted to run out of the house, despite claiming that she was afraid of her grandson and never even called for an ambulance to help him. Sandra claimed that she pulled the trigger after he attacked her, but the nurse who examined her after her arrest said she had no injuries and that she spoke lovingly about Jonathan. Sandra's defense asked jurors to view the incident through the eyes of a 74-year-old woman who was taking care of a teen that was using narcotics and bringing strangers to her home. He argued that Sandra was afraid and felt she had no choice. However, the jury didn't buy this story of self-defense and found Sandra guilty of second-degree murder. Her yeah. husband broke down in tears when the verdict was read, but her daughter described her as a monster and asked the judge for the maximum sentence. I know what I've done. I can't take it back. Sandra Lane pleading to the judge, the 75-year-old West Bloomfield woman who claimed it was self-defense when she shot her teenage grandson six times, had hoped for a sentence of three years in prison for second-degree murder. But Jonathan's mother, Sandra Lane's own daughter, made it clear she wanted the judge to lock her up for the max. Sandra Lane is pure evil, and if given the opportunity, would surely kill again. She has no remorse. I believe that for sure. Her only concerns are for herself. I don't know what else to say. I just don't know. I didn't want to die in jail. Her person. Like, it's so, uh, it's my life. 
Hold on. Lane sentence to what? They did that so fast. Lane sentence to 22 years. Dang. At that age, 75, and to make a mistake like that later on in life, and I'm going to say it is a mistake, but I don't know what's going on, but to me it sounds like that was cold-blooded. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing adding up, man. You know? When it was time to hand down the sentence, Judge Denise Langford Morris stated what clearly troubled the jury. Why didn't Sandra Lane call police? And why did she shoot 17-year-old Jonathan so many times? Right. If you really felt so violated and so afraid and a need to shoot, why did you keep shooting him? Sandra was sentenced to a minimum of 20 years in prison for killing her grandson, plus an additional two years for using a gun. Mm. As the judge was handing down the sentence, Jonathan's mother could be seen approving the decision and later told reporters that she was happy that her mother would spend the rest of her life in prison for killing her son. I'm just glad that she's put away and she can't do harm to anybody else. How would you have described Sandra Lane before all this? Uh, she was always a thorn in my side, to be very honest. She was very difficult, um, uh, very meddlesome, very controlling, and uh, I never liked her. Oh, God. <laughs> it's been honest, man, but um, y'all comment down below. Tell me exactly what y'all think about this case. To me, honestly, I feel like she done it. It wasn't self-defense at all. That was cold-blooded what she done, man. Hey, at the end of my videos, I always say stay inspired, stay motivated. Stay grinding until next video. I'm out of here. Peace.